Come on, if you need him this morning, let's just lift up our hands before our Heavenly Father. Father, we cry out to you this morning. We cry out for more of you, God. Lord, we cry out, Lord, give us a hunger for more of you, Lord. Make us desire you more than we desire anything else, God. Lord, we pray for a hunger and a thirst for your word, for your presence, for your Holy Spirit. Right now, I just pray, God, that you would stir that hunger within us, God. Make us desperate for you this morning. Make us hungry, God, after all that you are, God. Lord, that we can live in that overflow of your presence, God. We thank you, Lord, that as we worship you, God, Lord, we draw near to you. And Lord, I just thank you right now. If you're here this morning, if you're watching on Facebook Live this morning, and you're feeling the Holy Spirit inviting you, drawing you to God into a relationship with him, drawing you to Jesus, right now I just want you to simply respond. If you're feeling like your heart is beating out of your chest, that is the Holy Spirit drawing you, calling you. That is Jesus knocking on your heart's door and he wants you to open the door and to invite him to come in. He's not going to come in unless you open your heart and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come and be the Lord. Come and be the Savior of my life. If you're feeling his presence right now, he's calling you to draw closer to him. You may be far away from him. Maybe you invited him at one time, but you've allowed things and circumstances to draw you apart from him. And right now the Holy Spirit is calling you, is drawing you to come closer to him. Just open your heart this morning and receive him. Say, Jesus, I invite you to come into my mind, come into my heart, come into my life. Be my Savior, be my Lord. I surrender my life to you. I live for you from this moment on, from this day on. I dedicate my life to you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you're drawing. Holy Spirit, you're drawing people by your, by your Holy Spirit. You're drawing them. Lord, we thank you this morning for the response, Lord, that people are willing to come to you, Lord. They're not going to be running from you. They're going to be running to you. So we thank you, Lord, this morning. As we pray that your presence will fill every heart and every mind listening this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise this morning. He is here, amen, amen. We want to welcome you if you're watching. Uh, we are so glad that you're here this morning. Please uh, let us know that you are watching. You guys may be seated. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Uh, if you're watching, let us know where you're watching. I know uh, I took a quick look this morning at who was online uh, right as we were starting. I saw we have Vermont watching us. We have people from all over the United States watching us. And we encourage you to share uh, the, the service uh, with your friends online. And let's uh, spread the good news of the gospel. Amen. We want to welcome you. If you're a guest with us this morning, we're so glad that you're here. I'd like to ask you if you take a few moments and fill out the connection card in your bulletin. Uh, and uh, let us know if you have prayer requests. Let us know if you'd like to dedicate your life to Christ, if you'd like to get baptized. All those things, please make sure that you communicate with us. If you're watching uh, with uh, us, if you're with us online for the first time, also please let us know that... Uh, this is your first time. We'd love to connect with you. Or if you have a prayer request, please share that. And we have our prayer ministers who will be praying uh, for you. So we want to welcome each and every one of you. God has a word for us as we prepare. And also, uh, we have water baptism that we are beginning this Sunday that we hope will continue for many, many weeks and months. Amen? Uh, we are believing for souls to be saved. Uh, we are believing what the enemy meant for evil. God is uh, going to turn for, for good, and actually it is already happening. Um, I know that uh, last Monday, we, uh, we as a church, we called for another fast. This time, it, it is, we are calling for 
a media fast because we see how the enemy is using media to divide us, to bring fear, to bring anger and bitterness. And we, we don't want to be open to the enemy. Amen. And so we called for a fast from media, social media, news media, whatever media you're feeding off of. And for us to feed on the word of God and to just spend time that we normally spend on Facebook or social media or news media, take that time and spend it in God's presence. And I'm telling you what, the fruit of that has been beautiful. I, we have been receiving so many testimonies of people saying that they have such an amazing peace that they have never experienced before since they did this. And people are being healed and people are being restored. And you know, um, we received word um, just yesterday that there is a revival that is taking place in Minneapolis at the site where uh, George was murdered, at the very site. So the good news, see, the, the media wants to feed you the bad news, but the good news, I want to be the media of God this morning, and I want to bring you some good news. And the good news is that Right at the side where George Floyd, Floyd was murdered, there are hundreds of people that are being baptized. They have baptism going on in the middle of the street right there. They have hundreds of people who are being saved and who are being healed right there. And so what the enemy meant for evil, God is going to turn for good. And you know, um, if you, I, I shared a prophetic word that the Lord gave me on Wednesday night, if you uh, didn't have a chance to uh, listen to it. I encourage you to go on Facebook. It's, it's posted. But the main thing was what the Lord was showing me is that God is, is, doing this, is allowing this shaking, okay, in our nation is because we have departed from walking in the Spirit and living by the Spirit to walking in the flesh and living by the flesh. And the flesh produces death but the spirit produces life and god is calling the church to come back and be filled with the holy spirit not just have a form of godliness and denying its power but to be filled with the power of the holy spirit and so i encourage you i believe that this is a season when god is separating the wheat from the chaff he's separating the uh, wheat and the tares you know, I, I shared in the word on Wednesday how the wheat and the tares look almost identical. The only difference is the tares have no fruit and the wheat has the fruit. And yesterday we were driving back from Sandbridge and there it was, a farmer uh, harvesting the wheat. And I said, wow, look at that. It's so beautiful, golden. And I could just hear in my spirit God saying that this is a season of harvest. But the good news is it's a season of harvest, but the bad news is for those who are not producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, they're going to be separated. This shaking is going to bring people offense, and they're going to turn away from God. They're going to turn away from church. They're going to turn away from the work of, of the Holy Spirit. But God is raising up a remnant in this day, and I'm encouraging you to wake up and to be a part of that remnant. And let's fulfill the plan that God has for each and every one of us. And that is to be filled, refilled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. To make sure that we are constantly in communion with the Holy Spirit and we're producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, not the flesh. Amen. Not self-centeredness and self. That is the fruit of the flesh. You know, we live in a world of selfies. You know, it's all about self. And God is saying, I'm calling for the church. I'm calling for repentance from uh, uh, worshiping idols, worshiping self, worshiping stuff, worshiping, you know, it, it's all about, in America, it's all about materialism. And we have to repent, church. And repentance brings revival. And I believe that we are on the beginning of this great awakening and revival as the church is transitioning from doing church, just going through the motion and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And where the revival is going to take place is in the very places where Satan is causing bloodshed. 
where we're seeing the killing, stealing, and destroying, that's where God, if we repent and we cry out to God, we repent not because you've done something wrong. We repent on behalf of the sins of this nation. There's a lot of innocent bloodshed that on my walk this week, I just started weeping. And the Lord said, the, the cry of the innocent blood is coming before me. And it's loud. And he said, I want you to repent for the innocent bloodshed of the babies that are being, did you know, in New York State, there are more babies being killed than being born through abortion. Now, that's just one thing that I can tell you to repent for on behalf of the nation. I know, I, personally, I have a long list that I, I don't have to worry about running out. But we, we have to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves and not think of, you know, it's all about me. And say, God, what are you saying? What are you calling us to? And I'm telling you, you're not going to get that if you watch the media. You're not going to get that. You're not going to hear the voice of God. You're going to hear the enemy. And it's pride and rebellion that caused the Israelites on the first Pentecost to be killed. 3,000 people were killed on the first Pentecost. 50 days after, they, after Passover, after they left uh, Egypt, after they left Israel, uh, 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 slavery, they were at Mount Sinai. 50 days, Moses goes up on the mountain to get the laws from, from, from God. And while he's gone, the Israelites get into pride and rebellion and worshiping false idols. And when he comes back, 3,000 people were killed because the, the law and the flesh kills. But on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples were in the upper room in one accord, we are one. How do you like our new t-shirts? We are one. We're declaring to the principalities and powers that we are one, that there is no racism in this church, in the body of Christ. There's no room for division, that we are one. And on the day of Pentecost, I believe that there were people from different nations represented there. Actually, the word says that there were people from all over the world there with different different languages, different races, dif different nationalities. And on that day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, how many people were saved? 3,000. When, when you operate by the flesh, there's death. When you operate by the Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came, 3,000 people were saved. The Spirit gives life. We are in the age of Pentecost. We are in the age of the church. The next event on God's, God's calendar is the Feast of Trumpets. Rosh Hashanah, the rapture of the church. The shaking is separating the wheat from the chaff. It's separating the sheep from the goats. And there are a lot of goats in the body of Christ. And the goats, and I'm going to call them out, the goats are people with a religious spirit. They have a form of godliness, but they have no power. They worship self. It's all about me, me, me. And you offended me. And you did this to me. And you did that to me. And it's time that we die to self. We die to the flesh. And we walk by the Spirit. Because the Spirit gives life. Come on, church. We, we are a mature church. Jesus is coming back for a mature bride. He's coming back for a glorious bride. So we, it's time that we arise and we let the light of Jesus shine in and through our lives. So how are we going to do that? See, the disciples were in the upper room. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Out of that overflow, 3,000 people are saved. And then what do they do? Do they just keep worshiping and having conferences and having all these wonderful services? No. What they do now, they go into the highways and the byways like Jesus commanded them to do. He said, wait in, Je in Jerusalem until you're filled with power. And after you're filled, because we cannot do what God has called us to do. We cannot overcome evil in our own strength. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And as a result, they, and then he said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, I want you to go 
into all the world and preach the gospel, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Heal the sick, cast out demons. I mean, we have an assignment to do. And how are we going to do that? We're going to go out, just like the disciples. What I find very interesting in the book of Acts, we just read it last month, is that exactly what's happening now was happening then. There were a lot of riots going on. Paul had to go and preach, and he was threatened. His life was threatened. There were riots that were started as a result of the commotion that they were causing of preaching the gospel. And guess who was coming against them? The religious folks, the Pharisees, the religious people. Our greatest enemy right now to the church is a religious spirit that we have to bind in the name of Jesus, and we have to be on fire for God. And so the interesting thing is that the reason the church is not being the church is because we're not doing what we were called to do. That is to go, okay? So we're going to go today at 4 p.m. Uh, we are going into the highways and the byways. We're going into a community that is hurting, that is broken. How many of you know that Jesus didn't come to the perfect people? He came to the sick. He didn't come to the well. So we're going to go to a community that is broken in crime, drug abuse, and all kinds of uh, uh, demonic oppression. We're going to go right there. We have the news media. Uh, they decided that they're going to come and cover the, the event. We welcome them because we need the good news. Okay? We need some good news. So when we, when we starve that demon of negative media, God is going to give us the voice to declare and decree the positive, the good news. Amen? So the media is going to be there. Um, we are going to um, partner with this ministry called KIND which stands for Kings in Need of Development. And these are uh, young people that we're going to feed. We're going to feed over 300 young people. And uh, these are going to be young people that we're going to get off the streets and speak purpose and life into them. We're going to help them develop their skills and gifts so they know that they have a purpose. So uh, it is going to be at Olive Grove Baptist Church. Olive Grove Baptist Church. Uh, initially, we're going to do it in Oakleaf uh, community, but we've moved it to the church. We weren't sure how the weather was going to do, so we needed that option to go inside. So uh, meet us there this afternoon, 4 o'clock. We need volunteers um, uh, to pray. We need volunteers. If you say, you know what, I want to be a disciple that is going and is being used by my Father to bring in souls uh, meet after the service in the first room on the right hand. Um, just meet with Jeff, Will, and Amy, and they will be there to give you a, a post or um, a job for this afternoon. There's going to be worship. There's going to be uh, Pastor Tim uh, will be preaching, and I'll, I'll be sharing some. So um, come on out. We need lots of prayer covering. There's going to be a prayer walk after the event, and we're going to bring the uh, community together as one. We're going to get the body of Christ out there uh, where the needs are. So uh, please um, uh, join us. And um, also, if you'd like a t-shirt to wear for this event, there are t-shirts available after the service. You can get one. I know we have a limited number, uh, but um, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to um, get one. Okay, so we're going to bring our tithes and offerings now. I'm sorry, I had to get that preach in there. Um, I, I just, God is doing so many amazing things. And, and one thing as I was getting ready this morning that I want to share, this baptism right here, the Lord was showing me, uh, probably most of you don't know that Pastor Tim, one of his jobs working on the farm was to uh, learn how to dig wells. And he was telling me a while back, you know, about the whole process, how it works. And he said, you know, we knew that we hit the water when all of a sudden this water would start bubbling up from, from underneath. And it would just, it started off as a bubble. And what the Lord was showing me this morning was that this baptism that Pastor Tim obeyed the Lord to build is a well that he dug. It's a, it's a well. This is a well. This baptism pool is a well of salvation. And he showed me, he said, many will come, many thirsty, 
will come and drink of the well of salvation, and they will uh, get baptized here. And then the Lord showed me that this well is going to turn into rivers, and it's going to be rivers of living water. And this, these rivers are going to go to the nations. We're going to impact the nations for the glory of God. And so we, we are initiating a new season. We are declaring in the heavenlies there's a shift in the atmosphere, and we are mobilizing the troops. Guys, this is it. This is it. We're either awake or we're going to go back to sleep. I say let's wake up and let's go and fulfill the plan that God has for us. Amen? Um, the last thing I want to say, um, we are also welcoming a brand-new baby in our church family there's Heather who had the baby. How adorable is that? Baby Christopher Dallas and big brother is here. We're babysitting him and uh, we're going to take care of him while mom and dad are taking care of the baby. And um, we are so blessed with another beautiful member we're growing spiritual babies, physical babies. Amen. This is the year of giving birth. This is the year of birthing spiritual and physical babies. So if you're here and you've been believing for a baby, get ready. Get your nursery ready. We're getting our spiritual nursery ready as well. Well, as we prepare to give, let's honor the Lord uh, with our giving. If you're giving if you're uh, watching online, you can give uh, at myembassy.org forward slash donate. You can text to give. Uh, you can also mail it in, stop by. Uh, we so appreciate you guys. You know, this is the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God will never experience an economic crisis because the kingdom of God, our source is not this world. Our source is God. So if you're walking in covenant with God, which we're hearing a lot of people they're saying this thing has not affected them at, at all. Actually, some people say they've gotten increase during this season. Amen? Amen? Okay, only two of you are receiving that. I'm saying increase. I'm saying that's how the kingdom works. When we're faithful, God says, okay, I'm going to show you how my kingdom, how my economy works. So let's continue to honor God and to be fruitful in every area of our lives. Amen? As I pray, you're welcome to come and bring your tithes and offerings in these baskets. Father, we just want to thank you this morning, Lord, for allowing us to partner with you. God, that we can expand your kingdom, Lord. We can partner with you. We can be co-laborers with you. You've called us. You don't have another plan. We are the plan. You don't have a plan B. If we don't do what you have created us to do, it's not going to get done. But, Lord, we're here today to say, here am I, Lord. Send me. Here am I, Lord. Use me for your glory. And, Lord, even as we give, Father, we honor you. We serve you with our talents, with our treasures, and with our time. Lord, our lives belong to you, and we honor you as we give in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.